Hi, Dan. Hey, Mitch. Uh, first question, who are you and what do you do? I am Dan Ray, and I am, I don't never know what my title is, I don't know, CEO, founder of Dan's Tune Seattle. It's a music journalism website based on the local uh, like indie scene. And you're the founder, but you're not the only person who works at Dan's Tunes. Correct, yeah. yeah. In addition to yourself, you have, uh, according to your website, three staff writers, two staff photographers, and a social media assistant. Is that still yeah. accurate? Uh, no, that is not still accurate. Um, we did recently, I'm not I'm not great at updating the website. I'm not a tech person. Um, I have, so it's all volunteer, like including myself. Um, so people float in and out. I've had anywhere from like, five people helping to like 30 people helping at once um my list serve i want to say is like 30 to 40 people but especially in the quarantine like when you're not um like staff photographers aren't really doing that much right now because there's no concerts sure um so they've a little bit gone to the wayside um our social media assistant also uh wanted to switch she used to be a photographer for us and she wanted to switch back into that so she's doing that but uh but yeah no i have lots of help i couldn't do it i definitely could not do it without um without my team so I'm curious, with all these different people, do you give them guidelines or their do's and, do's and don'ts mm-hmm. for this is the tone of the site? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I have a whole handbook that has like do's and don'ts of journalism, basically. Um, like, you know, stay at the sh- like when you go to a show, like stay at the show the whole time um, for things like that. For music reviews, I... I really love to edit, like I love to teach and I love to mentor. Um, so I do a lot of that with writers, like, and because, because Dan's Tunes is all focused on like the indie scene um, and we don't really have like, I don't want to say we don't have standards, but it's, it, we're not going to be like, oh, you haven't played a show before. We're not going to cover you. Like if you're here and you're doing it, like it's journalism and we're going to cover you if like we're interested in it. Um, and I, and I feel that way a lot about my staff too. Like you don't have to have music writing experience or music photography experience to come onto our team. Like you need to have, you know, you need to be like a competent writer or a competent photographer, but I really like to like help people and like teach them along the way. Um, so a lot of the time with writers, yeah, I'll be like, great first draft but like let's try this instead gotcha yeah so uh, there it's so weird to even call like what's happening right now a music scene like are, are you yeah. looking for more people uh, what's the if are you looking to bring more volunteers on board if so is there well what's the best way yeah. to get in touch with you about that uh, i am always looking to bring more people on board um just because it is volunteer yeah like people kind of flow in and out um just as like life happens uh so yeah, no, always looking for more people, 100% always looking for more people. I mean, it doesn't have to be like photography and writing. Like if you are like, hey, Dan's Tunes should use this or do this, like, and you have ideas, like, please, I'm one person, I have one brain. I only have so many ideas. I have a lot and I talk a lot, but, but only only one brain. Um, the, but we do have a, uh, on our site and in our Instagram bio, we have a submission form. So it's like, I think it says work for us in our Instagram bio. Um, and then there's just like a form you fill out just put like your resume and why you're interested. Um, or you can just email me either way, uh, danray at dancetuneseattle.com. Uh, speaking of submissions, how, how do you assemble like most of the content for your site? Like when mm. you're reviewing bands, is most of that based off submissions or are you and your team actively looking and yeah. emailing people? I want to interview you. I want to cover your show. Can I? Whatever yeah. it is. It's is, a little, is there a balance? Yes. It's a little bit of both. Um, it's uh, I would say it's probably like 70 percent submissions, 30 percent active recruitment or active like finding things um that was a it was a little bit more active when there were shows too because a lot of people would be like oh my god this band i really like is playing a show like can i go cover this show and i'd be like 100 percent. like are they a local band you like them great go cover them um but no it's we do a lot with submissions like we we do really rely on submissions um we have like we have a playlist that we do and i pull all of those songs from all our submissions we have a monthly podcast that we do and i pull those guests from our submissions um but it is a lot of like especially for um a lot of the like black lives matter content that we were doing i had a lot of people on my staff who were like i really want to interview like this bipoc artist and like just going after it like how many submissions yeah. are you getting in a day or or week whatever the I'm at the height of it, I guess. Yeah, not. it really, it differs. Um, like this week I just went camping and I was expecting to have like 15 emails and I had one. So like, so it was in a way that's kind of nice. Cause I'm like, I don't have that much to catch up on. Um, but yeah, it, it really, it really depends. Some weeks it's like 20, some weeks it's like one or two. Um, cause I, I think there's, there's always music happening, but not all the musicians like know about us or know to submit to us. Um, I think also just in like the digital age, a lot of people, um, 
don't want to submit like they're they're submitting like or they're they're putting out like a single a week or something because it's like you know you can do that now um and they don't necessarily want to be like every week be like hey dan like here is my thing um so we'll get like bigger projects or like we'll get a single but not a full album or things like that um but but i always love submissions submit whatever you got (laughs) but you probably get enough submissions you can't feature everybody who writes in and uh yeah yeah, and I was reading that you make a point to respond to every email. This is kind of a silly question, but how do you say no to people who may have yeah. worked really hard on something and you decide, hey, I'm not going to feature this? Yeah, no, that's a really good question, actually. Um, and we do have a submission form now, so I'm, I'm not directly responding to people on that, which has its ups and downsides. I like that everything's in like one place with the submission form and it's a lot easier for me to like sift through. Um, but I do miss that more one on one interaction. So you can always email me if you want to talk to me. <laughs> I'm happy to talk to you. Um, or if we don't feature you and and you don't hear from me because you submitted through our form, like I'm totally happy like again like email me like I will tell you why um but no that's that's a good question it it usually is for the benefit of the artist because we'll get a submission and it will be like not as well produced as other submissions or just like you can tell that they're kind of like on the brink of like their artistry really flourishing but they haven't quite figured it out yet um and I don't want to like cover that and just be like hey like this wasn't up to our standards or this wasn't great like I we love giving I and my staff like love giving constructive criticism um, because that's like how you grow and that's something that I really do try to instill in like every piece that we that we put um like we're here to support and like be the musician's mirror in a way and like if we're just like that was great you're not going to learn anything totally um, so we we do try to do that uh i don't know if this is, <laughs> this is answering the question um no no it totally but, is because j- <laughs> just because somebody gets chosen to be featured on the yeah. side that doesn't mean it's going to be a puff piece like totally you, you've said yeah. uh i have the quote somewhere uh like if we give you con- constructive criticism it's not because we think you're bad it's because we think you're good and we want you to be even better yeah so there's a value to critical press especially exactly. like yeah I, I don't know what percentage of musicians are hobbyist musicians or how many think yeah. i am doing this totally but i think yeah. a lot of them are are the latter and yeah you guys can be yeah it's i'm, I'm talking too much tell me <laughs> about what you think the value of critical press is yeah um wow you really did do your homework i i where i don't even know i i do say that a lot but i don't even remember where i said that um yeah i think i think it's really to support and like help the community grow. Like like I said, if if we're just like you're great, you're not going to learn anything. Uh, I also I also like to make a point to musicians that like each piece that we write is kind of a self-contained bubble. Like it's not like if we give you a bad album review, it doesn't mean that we think you're bad. It means that we think maybe this album wasn't like up to snuff. Um, It doesn't mean that we think your live shows are bad. Like there there are several local bands here that I love their live shows, but they haven't really gotten the recording part down yet. Oh yeah, Um, I can vouch the same. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's a different experience. And even if you even if we give you you know like a critical review of your live show, doesn't mean we think you're bad. It means you had an off night. And like I said, like we want you to be better. We want you to improve. We want to support you and help you. And it doesn't help anyone to just be told that like everything that they're doing is great because yeah, you don't learn anything that way. Um, Oh, and I do want to backtrack for one second to your previous question um, that when I don't cover people, if they ask for feedback, like I, I'm happy to give it. I don't, I don't always start with feedback just because I don't know who's open to it. But if you're like, Hey, like, yeah, why didn't you cover this? Like, I'm happy to let you know why. Um, also sometimes it honestly, it's fairly rare that I'm just like, no, we're not going to cover this. Um, most musicians here are very talented now that we're, um, we've kind of boosted a little bit in quarantine. Um, so we're getting more submissions than we ever have, which I love. Uh, but so now I am saying no to to a few more things. Um, but a lot of the time it's just we're an all volunteer staff. And what how I organize things is I just put everything on a spreadsheet and my staff has access to the spreadsheet. And the, like sometimes they'll ask me like, hey, like, what do you really want covered? But most of the time they'll just go in, they'll listen to it and they'll be like, I like this. I'm going to cover this. So a lot of time if we don't cover you, it's not that we didn't want to or that like there was anything weird. It was just my staff was like busy doing their life or whatever it was. Yeah, I think that's fairly standard with any professional yeah. publication. There are busier yeah. weeks and right. 
Yeah. I love yeah. hearing more like about the philosophy of how you guys decide things. Um, there was something else <laughs> I was reading. Uh, on, I think this was on your website. Yeah. In okay. your about section, you're saying yeah. that the ultimate goal is to make Dan's tunes a nationwide uh, reputable source mm-hmm. for music journalism with satellite sites in other major cities around the country. Um, yep. Yeah. You mentioned you're a few in a different interview uh <laughs> mentioned you're a few years off from doing that uh definitely yeah can you tell me what are the complications you need to, to solve to make that possible i assume money's the big thing money is a big one but can you be specific about what needs to happen and maybe how people can help you do you yeah, have a patreon for sure. page um yeah so we do we do have a patreon um that i've been trying to push um i know times are super hard right now and especially for musicians like that's that's a lot of the problem honestly is like I would say, I don't know the demographic breakdown for sure, but I would say like 80% of our audience is local musicians, right? So we're all kind of in the same boat. Like none of us have any spare money. Like we love to support each other, but you know, you can only give what you can give. Um, So the the big one is money. I, I am not a businesswoman. It's also like almost impossible to run like a content producing publication and also the business side. Um, Like literally no newspaper that I am aware of has that in the same department. It's like two complete, it's almost two completely separate companies. Like it's not, but it's, it's very like separate. Um, So I, the biggest hurdle is, yeah, just like turning it into something that I can actually do to, um, support myself financially and support my writers and my photographers and all my staff financially. Um, and that's, it's not like, I'm not in this to make money clearly, but, but I would love to get it to a point where, uh, where I can do that and focus on it. And, um, that might be now because, so yeah, if you, if you guys want to help, let me know who's got business savvy, who wants to help. Um, because I got laid off a couple weeks ago and now I'm kind of feeling like, now's just the time to do it up. Like it's been three years that I've been saying I wanted to make it into a business and just haven't really had the fortitude to do it. Um, but I, I started dance tunes right after I had lost a job three years ago and I'm like, feels kind of kismity. Is that a word? Yeah. Uh, it is now. Uh, and I, I feel like it's a little bit time to do it up. So yeah, if, if, uh, anyone, if anyone has ideas, um, let me know. It's, it is tricky though, because like I don't want to do subscriptions because I don't want to wall off my content to the people who are reading it and don't have any money. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, like I, my goal is to support the community. So I'm not going to wall off my content to the community. Um, ads are not really a very feasible way to make money right now, just because of the pandemic, like ads are like, no one's buying advertising. Yeah. That's true across all broad based journalism. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, especially in journalism and the job I got laid off from was an ad agency. So like, <laughs> yeah. especially like, uh, yeah, you're like, it's not, it's ad, not ads right now. Um, so yeah, if anyone has ideas on how to turn dance students into a business, I am all ears. Um, and yeah, and if you, and if you value what we do and, uh, you want to help us out, we have a Patreon and, uh, ev- like literally every, every penny is, makes my heart smile. Like, even even when you were like, can I interview you? I was like, oh my god! Like, you want to interview me? Amazing! Like, of people course, value I think this. What you do is super cool. Thank you. Yeah. Do you yeah. have um, like, have you talked to other people who have similar kind of sites? Like, are there people mm. you look up to? Is was Dan's tunes based on any specific publication or people yeah. you want to model it off? Have you talked to any of those people about what they did to maybe make? I'm money? starting to now. Yeah. Um, I think honestly, I think for the past few years, I have just been um really afraid if I'm going to be honest um uh, like a, a f- afraid of really like going all in afraid that I wouldn't be able to do it afraid that I would fail and um quarantine actually has really helped me get over that because it's just like what are you gonna do live your whole life inside afraid like fuck no that's stupid um it's kind of sick of it <laughs> so uh so we're, we're getting out now um so I'm, I'm actively like right now actually trying to start talking to more people in the community about how they do that um if the the site that I probably modeled it off of though is honestly Rolling Stone, yeah, uh, and I, I kind of want to be a better Rolling Stone, like Rolling Stone has you know ifs and buts about it, um, and like a local, like I don't I don't want to go national like Rolling Stone. I want to keep it all indie. Like satellite campuses is the is the goal, but it would all be focused on like that local scene. Like a lot of the time people are like, what do you cover in Seattle? And I'm like, well, we cover what people make. So we do a lot of like indie rock and dream pop and things like that, but it's not because that's what I think we should cover. It's just because that's what people You're are reflecting doing. The community. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um so you know, if we have a dance tunes New Orleans, it's going to be like a lot of jazz. New York is going to be a lot of like hard rock and etc. Um 
Well, one of the things yeah. Rolling Stone does that you guys started, like Rolling Stone does news, and you mm-hmm. recently like branched into doing that. I know that had been a goal of yours for a while. Yeah. Where I was looking at the, the photo stories that uh, yeah. some of your staff made covering the George Floyd mm-hmm. protests and the Chaz slash Chop yeah. movements. Um, is that is there a heavier sense of burden where like you have journalistic integrity Mm. and you definitely have that covering music but yeah does it feel different covering music versus hard news it does for sure um and i like my background is in news really i mean i'm 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 definitely a music nerd like don't get me wrong um but in college like at my college paper i wrote mostly news i did a little bit of arts um and and i i would love to fill out the new section of dance tunes even more that's always been the goal like, like modeled after rolling stone the the protests were really difficult um, because there was just so much information coming at you. Um, and I mean, like this whole year has been like that, right? Yeah. Um, but especially the protests when people's um, like they're just all alert, right? Like you say anything and it can set someone off. And I really wanted to make sure in covering the protests that we didn't editorialize like at all i wanted to be like here is exactly what is happening and you make a decision from that like my job as a journalist is not to tell you what to think it is to give you all the facts because you're an adult and you can make an informed decision and i think that's probably hard to do you want to tell an engaging story but you have to (laughs) keep it honest and accurately reflect the reality yep it's really hard especially as just like a human like humans naturally have opinions it's really really difficult and i honestly don't think it's totally possible i think there's a way to do it as best as you can um but i you know i don't want to end up like um like Fox News or CNN where people are just like okay CNN's liberal and Fox News is conservative like my favorite news outlet is probably NPR because they definitely lean a little bit liberal but I do think they do a good job of of showing both sides absolutely yeah uh, I'm kind of fascinated about this bit in your bio you're from Detroit okay. yes well you, suburbs of Detroit suburb, yeah, yeah. Uh, you moved to Seattle in 2017 yes. for what you said was a big girl job yes you uh, <laughs> you've left that job two yeah. months later yes what kept you in seattle after you moved here and then right away you're without a job two months i'm sure yeah. you had big ideas when you moved here yeah you was going back home an option like because when you first moved here you you said you didn't know anything about the no. seattle music scene i had was literally never that, been here yeah <laughs> before i moved here <laughs> yeah um that's a really good question um it was not the music scene but i i had wanted to move to a major city ever since I can remember. Like I am not a suburban human. And um, I, before I got the job here, well, I'd actually always wanted to live in New York and I I still, sorry, Seattle, but I still really want to live in New York for at least a little bit and, you know, probably come back here. I love, I love it here. Uh, But I I got, you know, that's, I, that's my ultimate dream with like the satellite campuses. Like I set this one up, I get this one good to go, pass it off to someone who I trust. And then I move to some other major city, whether it be New York or like, oh God, I've never been to Austin or Nashville. And I really want to go there because music scenes are so cool. Um, but like, you know, then move there for a couple of years, set that one up, get that one going, then go to another city and kind of like nomad around for a little bit and then like come back to a homestead. Um, but no, I, yeah, I, I wanted, I've wanted to live in New York since I was like four. And after college, I started applying to jobs in literally every major city that I thought would be moderately okay to live in. Like lit- like New York, Baltimore, Boston, Nashville, Austin, Seattle. I think the only place I avoided was like LA because I do not want to live in the desert. Yep, <laughs> like, we're the same there. Do not want that. Um, but yeah, and I just ended up out here. Um, so I left that job after two months. It was down in Kent, uh, which I think says a lot about it. Um, my uh oh actually this is going to tie into my show and tell i said poop in the office one day and my boss literally yelled at me and i was like i don't belong here if i can't talk about poop yelling at you for being childish or what i literally don't know she was upset that i said poop she didn't really like me anyway um and i have to say like i it was my first job like i didn't really know how to comport myself so um like i can't i'm not i can't put all the blame on her but um no and i was i was literally just like talking to one of my coworkers, and i had like my coffee creamer and i was like like does this smell funky to you and she was like oh I can't really tell and I was like I can't really either but it's kind of old but I was like whatever like I drink it worst case I have a weird poop that was literally all I said and my boss was like you can't say poop in the office and I was like 
I truly don't understand. <laughs> Like I really it's do a not culture understand. Shock. Yeah, totally. Um, and also like very corporate job. Um, like this job that I just had. Is that had, also advertising? Um, yeah, yes. It wasn't at an ad agency, but I was doing marketing. Okay. So I was doing email marketing. So yeah, still definitely like in that vein. Um, and yeah, like the last job I had was was corporate, but m much like much freer, much more like a much more mad many <laughs> where it's like everybody's just kind of having fun there's like a bar in the office and um, this job was very like suit up corporate um so i i was just like i can't do this so i i yeah i left after two months and uh i i just didn't i didn't want to leave i had always wanted to live in a city i mean i was in a lease i could like i could have broken the lease but i had i had just moved here um like my T uh, three of my really good friends had like cross-country road tripped with me here um and it was like a whole big thing and uh, yeah, I just I didn't I didn't want to go back to Michigan. Like I didn't want to be in Michigan. That was why I left. I love Michigan. Don't get me wrong. Like I absolutely love Michigan. It was an amazing place to grow up, um, but it's not like who I am anymore. And I, I love going there and visiting and like Ann Arbor, where I went to school at um, University of Michigan. And Ann Arbor is like will always have a super special place in my heart. Um, and I, I like to go there at least like once a year. And I haven't this year, obviously, because of quarantine. So a little sad about that. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't want to leave and I just, I made it work. So then, yeah, it was after I quit that job and I was working at like a temp job at this legal processing firm. It was absolutely terrible. I was going to say horrible, terrible, horrible. And um, it was like, can you tell, like, I'm so extroverted if you can't tell. And everyone there would just like put in their headphones and just like work. And I was like, I was going nuts. I was like, I, I cannot. I need people to talk to, I need people to interact with. Um, so that's when I started Dance Tunes because I was just like, I need something that I actually care about. Like I need something to do. Um, and and then, yeah, I guess since then, it wasn't music that kept me here originally, but it's definitely what keeps me here now. Thanks, that's so cool. Yeah. Uh, but Dance Tunes isn't the only thing you do. Um, I gotta play the Work From Home Seattle live stream oh, back yeah, in yeah. April. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and it was just the best time ever. Tell me about how you got involved with work from home and what are your responsibilities on that team? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That, that live stream show has legitimately saved my life during quarantine. Like it, to be able to get out of the house and go to see like friends play music once a week is just like otherworldly. Um, but no, uh, Robbie Christmas or RX Robbie, Mom. uh, yeah mom <laughs> yeah exactly uh i know i never know how to refer to him because like his stage name is rx but like he's just my friend and his i'm like it's Did robbie you, christmas you knew, him, you knew him before i knew him before we were not i wouldn't call us like friends before i had covered one of his shows at the royal room in columbia city and that was like one of probably it was close to the start of dance tune so maybe like two oh, cool. two and a half years ago it wasn't it wasn't it was pretty close to the start um and like i thought he was great and actually he told me later he, he told me when we were working on the show that in that review i compared him to james bay and he was like that's when i knew we were gonna be friends I was like, <laughs> yes like i knew it i could tell your influences uh but no like and that's validating as a writer too totally yeah, yeah. you don't want to yeah. false attribute something to because i've exactly. had that and i'm sure yeah. every musician has had yeah they sound like this i'm like oh i don't want to sound like that yeah <laughs> yeah no honestly like uh, people are so nice to me about the reviews that I write and it it really does warm my heart like when, Robbie also told me that um like that was one of his first real shows that he played after he had kind of like taken a break like he was still doing like gigs but he wasn't doing like he was doing like winery gigs I mean he still does winery gigs but he it was his one of his first shows back where he actually like put his heart into it basically his com I talked to him for a couple hours after we did yeah, the live. Okay. his comeback yeah. story is like so I, I'm hoping yeah. to talk to him about because he has yeah. so much to tell he Robbie's great um, and he's he's really articulate as well he, yeah. he doesn't think he is but he is <laughs> uh, he seems someone to be self-deprecating he is but yeah. he's very self-deprecating but he's he's the best um, he's one of my like he's one of my very very close friends now um but uh but yeah i was talking to him and and he was like like that review like helped him get the confidence to like keep going because that was one of his first shows back and i was like it, it's like when people tell you things like that that you're like oh my god like my work does matter and like this really does like help people and impact people um there was another actually um king king Sh uh, shame who is uh, celeste felsheim who is now our one of our writers um she played sound off a couple years ago oh cool and 
in the review, like, I thought she should have won. She was fucking fantastic. And not that the bands that won or, like, placed, like, she didn't even place. Like, so not that the bands that placed were bad. They weren't at all. Um, but I was just, like, she got ripped off. And, like, I wrote that in my review. Not word for, I don't remember what I wrote word for word. But I was basically, like, she should have won. And I remember, like, her mom messaged me and Aww. was, like... Thank you so much. Like Celeste was crushed, and Sound Off uh, for anyone who doesn't know is a Mo Pops under twenty one battle of the bands. So it's like it's like kids, and she was like, yeah, like Celeste was crushed, um, and like I know I felt that way before when I was younger, and like this review really helped like spin that around. And it's like yeah, it's moments like that where you're just like, oh my god, like my heart, <laughs> like this this does matter. This does like help people. For people um, who have seen other episodes of Show and Tell, our first guest, Jason McHugh, he won Sound Off. Um, yeah. Two three years ago i don't know how long yeah, ago it was it was it, it's a super it's a prestigious thing to win it is yeah 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 I, honestly i don't even remember who won last year there was no winner this year because uh the final got canceled because of coronavirus oh that's too bad mm -hmm. so uh i think david's van won the last final i want to say and they're going to be um on the stream this friday or like i don't know when this comes out so it'll it might come be out after. on friday great so, so tonight tonight <laughs> So tonight, um, they will be on the show, uh, and they're a super fun, like comedic punk band. They're oh, they're really be fun. fun, yeah. And they like oh, already have a following. Work from because you tend to have more stripped back arrangement or performers on there, right? Yeah, a little bit. Um, it's just yeah, we especially in the beginning of quarantine, like it was like you know one person per set, like someone in a guitar, someone in a keyboard, whatever. Um, now that like you know we're in phase two and like people know how to deal with it a little bit better, we've been able to have a little more um a little more variety. Um, and like now I I guess you you asked me what my responsibilities are. Um. But at first we had a submission form. We were mostly pulling from that. Um, and now we're really just reaching out to artists. So I was like, David's van just came out with an album. Like, let's get them. Like they're, they're really fun. Um, yeah, I didn't even answer your question. So how I got involved with work from home was Robbie posted on Facebook at the beginning and he was like, I want to start a live stream. He has a studio. And I was like, let me help. I would love to help any way I can. And it just kind of snowballed from there. Like, so yeah, so now, um, I wasn't there in person at first and then they asked me to come in person. I was like, yes, yeah, uh, <laughs> you get to see live music again, get to see live music, get to like, get out of the house, especially like when I was working, um, at the, at the ad agency job, um, I was, I was very quarantined. Like I lived in my apartment alone. Um, I was really scared at the beginning of the pandemic. I mean, I think everybody was, but, um, like I lived, I live alone or I lived alone. I don't anymore. Um, I was like just working my job from my computer all day and like I didn't really have very many meetings even with people or anything so I was like very quarantined so to be able to get out of the house I was like oh my god this is amazing um, I'm so glad you get to work there we're gonna take yeah. a quick break and come back uh, with more Dan Ray from Dan Stone <laughs> Seattle <laughs> all right and we're back with Dan Ray uh, from Dan Stone <laughs> Seattle uh, we were just talking about work from home the live stream show you work on yes um, I cut you off a little bit there because we had to reset our the camera battery yeah here. no worries um, yeah you were just talking about how much of a fun time it is we've got David's van uh, mm -hmm. on the episode tonight mm, uh, yes yes <laughs> I was gonna be like it's not Friday but yes tonight yeah when this comes out we are pre taping this. <laughs> we are pre taping <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a really fun time. We're raising money for musicians in need. Um, it's you know, it's good. It's a fun live stream to just throw up in the background. And I do think we're a little bit different than other live streams. Like uh, most live streams are just music, which is great. Um, but we also have a lot of like, we're a little bit more like a talk show. Like we oh, yeah, sh we sure. shoot the shit. We it's you know kind we of have a comedy segments. show too. You got a little bit. Yeah. Is that line? Do you, you guys are funny on there? I imagine you're not in advance <laughs> writing bits. Oh, we should talk about this, or are you? We do like um, we don't write things, but like like a couple of weeks ago, um, when Mom was out of town, when Robbie was out of town, Pat and I were like, oh, like what should we talk about? And Taylor Swift had just dropped Folklore, oh, so we yeah. were like, let's talk about that. Like we both love pop music. Like let's definitely talk about that. So we didn't like write a script or anything. We we're like, yeah, like here are some talking points. Like we'll touch on this. We'll touch on this. Whatever it may be. Um, and we work, we work with the artists on that too. Like if there's things that they want to talk about, like we had uh, Rio Shane last week, and she really wanted to talk about Black Lives Matter. So we definitely like made time for that, um, and wanted to be able to, you know, we want to be able to give artists the platform to talk about the things that they want to talk about yeah. cool uh i love the letter from the editor from last year you put out that had tons of pokemon references do you know <laughs> yeah, what i'm talking about i do okay, know what you you're do. talking about uh, so this yeah. isn't really a question um it's more of a gift uh from one pokemon trainer to another okay. this is a weird little thing oh my They're god super tiny but take those out and tell people what they are oh my gosh 
these. I'll probably have you hold, get them right up to the camera because they are super okay. tiny. Okay, they're super tiny. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. I really actually don't know that much about Pokemon. I'm just a writer. But but you, but you had such great quotes. <laughs> but, like, but, but oh, this is I Pikachu. Had to write it down. It so good. I you actually can't don't advertise know what this a Weedle one is. as a Charmander. Okay, yeah, Weevil is my favorite Pokemon because I'm fucking an Aquarius. That, oh, cool. <laughs> like, and I'm just a fucking weirdo. Uh, is this close enough? We got Pikachu. I actually don't know what this one is. <laughs> These are so cute though. Oh yeah, so we have Pichu on the left and Pikachu on the right. Okay, all right, yeah. all right, there we go. Yeah. Those are extra little guys I've had in my room, and they're too small to display or anything, they're but so they've cute. just been hanging out. So I love them. Ho hopefully you'll find a little home for oh them. Oh my gosh, thanks so much. <laughs> I love it. They're so happy. Yeah, no, I uh, that was like right when Pokemon Go was big too. So I did know a little bit more about it then, but I, yeah. I never, I never like watched it growing up. I never really played with the cards growing up. Um, but it just felt the Game Boy games. Did you ever play those? A little bit. That, that was bit? my. I think that was probably the height of my interest as okay. far as the Pokemon okay. universe yeah. is considered. Yeah, I think they're fun. Like they're definitely fun. Um, but yeah, and, and Weeble's my favorite because it's just like the silly little worm, and you're just like, look at you. you like may be you're the trying only so hard. One who has Weedle as their favorite? I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to get too much off track, Pokemon. <laughs> okay. um, but there is one other off-topic thing. Yeah. Um, Where's your cat right now? Oh, my cat is in my room. Okay, because you you claim that every time you sing, can you feel the love tonight, oh, your yes. cat comes running. Yes. We're, we're on the roof right now, so probably not best to <laughs> I, demonstrate that. Yeah, I don't want to bring her up here. But I'd like to test that. Like, if we, if we went inside and you sang, can you feel the love tonight, would she actually run okay. out towards you so this is actually a new development that i was i think i'm gonna change my bio because i'm not sure anymore she used to all the time but then i actually like i so i just moved into this place and she's in my room because there's another cat and we're still like working on introducing them oh yeah um, cats are awful <laughs> yeah it takes them like weeks yeah um but i was like i couldn't find her and i sat on my bed and started singing because she loves it uh, and she'll like usually come and just like like curl up on my chest with me um and she wasn't coming and I was like what the fuck Macaulay where are you like I can't find you um and it turns out she was just under the bed but there's like drawers in the bed like so the the bed frame that I have now it was already here um so I like didn't know how it worked and there was drawers in it and she like crawled behind the bed and got under the bed and then wouldn't come out when I was singing so I actually don't know if this is true or not she might have just been like scared because she's in a new place but We'll have to see. We we'll, can we'll totally to test, test it. it. Remind me yeah. when we wrap here, and we we'll, can we'll do it. it. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Are, are you? Do you consider yourself a musician? Because you you play guitar. Do you, yeah. do you ever write or things like that? Yeah. Do you have any interest in doing what you cover? I do. That's that's a very good question. Um, and I f I feel like this answer is probably going to be very long winded. Um, but when I when I was younger. I would tell people I wanted to be Katy Perry. Like all I wanted to be was a pop superstar. Yeah. Um, and then I would get like dick people who'd be like, no, you should be yourself. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Like, I mean, yes, I'm going to be myself. But like, I just went through some where I'd be like, oh, like I want to be like a singer. And people would be like, what do you mean? Like, that's not a job. And I'd be like, Ugh. so I just started telling people I wanted to be Katy Perry. But um, yeah, no, I wanted to be a musician. Like my entire childhood and then um literally like it was probably the day I graduated college I had this realization where I was just like I have no idea what I'm doing like I graduated college and I have no plan like Oof, I have no this is hidden deep yeah right yeah. um I don't know how to work with other musicians like um you know like I mentioned I was af I was afraid of like monetizing dance tunes because I was afraid I was gonna fail and I think that was a lot of like why I didn't pursue music too because I was always just like oh like I'm not good enough and people aren't gonna want to work with me and um you know like I I just I don't know well what were you doing before you graduated were you playing coffee shops did had you ever no. performed it's all just I confined did to the bedroom I did theater Okay. Um, so I, like, I, I would definitely consider myself a performer. Oh my gosh. I also sidebar just real quick. Yeah. I went camping this weekend and tried, um, those, like those gloves that have like lights at the fingertips Ooh, where you like yeah. finger dance. And, um, that's going to be my new thing. I'm, I'm obsessed with that. That is so, I do that anyway. Like when I listen to music, I'm always just like, <laughs> and, uh, I'm like, yeah. So like, that's going to be my new performance thing. But, um, but no, yeah, I did theater, Turn off all the lights and just, exactly. Yeah. I was like, I'm just going to sit in my room and like figure it out. Um, but no, yeah, I, I did theater. Like I did theater all throughout high school. I did a little bit of theater in college too. Um, so I've, I've always loved performing and I've, I, oh my God, I did like one open mic in high school, I think. Um, and I, I, I've been writing songs since I was like eight, uh, wow. not, um, 
not like instrumentation but like lyrics and melodies but then i think something that did also like add to my fear of really going after it was a lot of people would be like oh like your verses and your choruses are just in like two completely separate keys or like things like this and it, and i never felt like i could um I never felt like I could learn. Who were was... these people telling you that? Did you value their opinion? <laughs> it was like, I think it was like one of my voice teachers. Um, so like, yeah, I did value their opinions. And, and I felt like instead of hearing, um, I, I think people with like anxiety can relate to this. Like instead of hearing, hey, um, let me help you get better. I heard you're not good enough and you should stop. Here's all the things you're doing wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm really like, that's something that honestly like coronavirus and pandemic has taught and like quarantine has taught me as well. Like I'm, I'm learning to take feedback better um, and the music community, honestly, like, and that's part of why I love it. Like I, I never had a supportive community growing up. Like I moved around a lot as a kid um, and I just like, I never had like a group of friends. It was always just like I have one friend here one friend there whatever um and like the music community really actually taught me that like like we all we 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 all rise up if we all support each other it's not no one's better than anyone else like we all help each other um but yeah so I always wanted to be a musician and then I took a break for like three years after college just because I think I needed a break from just like fucking beating myself up over it and telling myself I wasn't good enough um and like now I'm starting to get back into it. So I would actually mainly consider myself a vocalist, but I'm trying to learn guitar uh, and like I have a guitar, a bass, and I bought a uke too because I was oh, like, it's fun. cute. Yeah. yeah. Um, because I, I do really want to start start writing more um, and performing more and maybe even join a band. And uh, so so yes, I do. And, and I actually wrote like two songs over quarantine that I'm really proud of. So I would love to hear them. They Okay. Yeah. Uh, we could show and, and tell songs and, and give you and give you feedback that makes you regret. Yeah, I would love not. Yeah, no, no yeah. helpful feedback. No, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah no, it was just uh, I, I feel like I'm still learning how to like hone it because those two songs like I wrote them two days apart from each other. And the first one came out in like three hours and the second one came out in like one and like haven't been able to write since then. So I think I'm still really learning how That's to like thing. harness that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, you've been covering the Seattle music scene for a while. Are there general trends or vibes of the city that mm. you've like noticed? Um, is there any snootiness to the thing? <laughs> you've, you've talked about how much you love pop music and I, in a I lot of music, music circle, I, I do too. Yeah. In a lot of, a lot of music circles, it, it can be shit on yeah. to a certain degree. Yeah. Like, I don't know, is, yeah. is Seattle different from other music scenes that you've observed? Yeah. Uh, um, that's a little bit of a hard question to answer. Honestly, it, I'm definitely put you on the spot. With yeah, it. Um, and also just because I, I people actually ask me that fairly often, and I but I don't feel like I know any music scene as in depth as Seattle's because sure. when I was in Michigan, like I was mostly underage. So I wasn't like going to shows and clubs yeah. and like seeing music. Um, and Ann Arbor has like Wolfpack is from Ann Arbor. Um, and they have, they, so Ann Arbor has like a little scene, but it's not nearly as like vibrant as it is here. Um, but no, see, Actually, Robbie and I talk a lot about um, how Seattle is not super into pop music. Like, it is kind of like, it's like, oh, no, like, that's cute. Like, go over there with that or whatever. Um, but I think it's coming back. Yeah. Like, I think, you know, like, Robbie just put out a really good pop album. It's so good. It's so good. I know. I've been waiting for this album. I already, like, I've listened to it so many times. I helped him sequence it. So I've been listening oh, cool. to it for, like, months. Um, so also, if anybody needs help sequencing, <laughs> let me know. I was, uh, yeah. How, how was he... <laughs> Because I he asked us to open for him for his album release show, oh, and obviously cool. okay. that couldn't happen. Yeah. So yeah. like, yeah, did you yeah. were you planning like marketing? Because that's what you do when you're not doing dance tunes. Were you helping yeah. him with? He's going hard on the marketing. He's and going PR hard. Of yeah. This. So like, are you helping with yeah. that? What, um, what what advice do you give to him and other musicians who are looking to? Yeah. Really expand their reach. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's I another on the spot question. Yeah. I know. It's a no, big, I love yeah. it. Uh, I I didn't help him with um, like strategy for marketing or anything, um, but we did make we we did like a track by track breakdown of his album, and we just released it as the Dance Tunes podcast for this month on. Um, 
it's the Saturday. new podcast. You it's just, a new podcast. Yeah. yeah. Um, haven't changed the name on Spotify yet because I'm still working out my podcast icon. Uh, so I'm going to change it once we get the updated icon. Um, but yeah, it's called, it's called talking tracks now and it's like a curated listen. So we listen to a track and then we like break it. Like I interview Robbie after, and we're going to keep doing that. So yeah, if you want to be on the podcast, submit to us, we do one once a month and then we're going to start dropping the podcasts, um, like the days that the albums drop. Um, but so Robbie took that and I basically just put the whole thing up as our podcast and then he edited it down and made like a little like documentary about the album. And we did that instead, like instead of last week, um, having an artist on work from home, we aired that instead. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would love oh, to wait, see, but advice you asked oh. advice. <laughs> if you don't have any, I, it's a big question if you don't, or you can think no. on it or if you have some, yeah. Yeah. I think, um, consistency and personalization. Um, if I actually, there's, there's another local musician, um, Thomas Arndt, whose project is another magic. He was actually one of my podcast guests too. Um, but every time he does a release, I get like a personal Facebook message from him. I get a personal Instagram message from him. Like oh, I get one, like three weeks before, two weeks before, one week before, and then like the day before too. And it really does like, there's so much content and it's so hard to get people to like sit down and actually watch something. Like he made me want to watch it because it was like, I didn't feel pressured. Like it wasn't like, oh, you better watch this. It was just like, hey, like friendly reminder, you know, um, and and that really like makes it stick in people's brains. That's super. Yeah. That's super helpful. Not being afraid to, mm -hmm. as much as people want to share their art, it yeah. you don't want to hassle friends and family. Right. But but if you're in right. the industry promoting, like it's good to hit up those people yep. because. I, I volunteer at KXP oh, cool. and okay. um, I know those DJs, it wouldn't surprise me if they get hunt, uh, over a hundred emails a day of oh, yeah, people I'm sending sure. them tracks. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and that's the other crate. When you put out a new release, it's only new for about a week. Like yep. something's not, because yep. new music is coming out every single day. Yep. So there's so much build up to the release of something yep. and yeah, it, it's worth over hitting people up to mm -hmm. check it out because yeah. after a week or two it's it's not as newsworthy you're not going to yep. get yeah because you probably don't yeah. men mention things that are over a month old yeah we so our policy is that i will only we will only review things um for up to two weeks after release date yeah. which that's a fair is policy. flexible on our end like we did just release a couple that were post that but that was because i messed up and like i was like moving and like got laid off and things so like my writer had written it and i didn't get him edits in time so that wasn't like that was because it was my fault and i was like i'm not gonna punish this musician by like or and my writer for like not putting this review up just because like i took a week to get you edits yeah uh, I would love to see what you have for show and tell today. All right, let's do it. You have two items. <laughs> I have two items. One is like personal learn about Dan and one is like, here's this thing that everyone should have okay. that I want to share. <laughs> yeah. Start with whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Let's do personal first. Okay. All right. How, how high do I, where's the camera? How high should Let I hold it? Come in close here. Bring it up okay, a bit. Bring it up. This, cool. This is my, this is my personal the remnants of my personal CD collection from like middle school. I don't know. Daughtry exhibit a, there's a bunch here. I actually don't know what order they're in. I had that album. Yeah. It's I, okay. It's good. I was not as into it, but that, okay. yeah, I will never judge somebody else for, because music is so subjective. Music is subjective. And I okay. loved him on American Idol. Yes. And I was disappointed. The I'm Coming Home song I was not into mm, at all. Okay, I see that. Yeah, he, I mean, it's definitely very, very, like, 2000s alt-rock. Sure. Um, but, like, this is an American Idol tattoo. Oh, so, cool. So, like, I, I've auditioned four times. Really? Um, yeah, so that, those are stories, too. Um, so, I, and also, a like... Any callbacks or what? What's the no. process like? How long... This is a whole other, I don't want to take up too much. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy. I, dude, I love talking to people. I'm happy to sit here and talk for however long you want to talk to me for. Yeah. Um, it, I never made it past the first round. Um, Were you, are there pre-judges before you get to the yes. judge? Yeah. Okay. So it's, I did it the first time I was 16. So that would have been 2010, which would have been season 11. So that was like in it or no season nine. Sorry. So that's like in its heyday. Um, well, yeah. season nine was the worst season by far, but um, that was like, it peaked and then it like started going down. Um, and then, so it changed a little bit each time, but the first time I did it, it was in like a big arena. I went to Milwaukee um, and you just get like a seat ticket and that is your place in line. 
So it's yeah. not like you're actually like standing in line for hours. Like they make it look like, like you are, there is definitely a part where you're standing in line. Um, but mostly you're free to like sit and then they call you up like a section at a time. They start in like the lower bowl. I was in the upper bowl that time. And they there's like in the in the middle of the arena there's like four tables with like two or three producers at them and then just like curtains between them and then they tell you to like go to a table and you line up four people in front of the table and there's like four rows of four and then you just like step forward and you sing down the line for literally like 10 to 30 seconds it's not long and then they're like okay great like you all didn't make it thanks <laughs> or they're like one person stepped forward and you made sure. it, but like mostly At this it's point, like they're not asking for sob stories or anything like that. You fill out um, like a sheet of paper, okay, and then you give it to them. So like I, th they probably like skim through it while you're singing and like yeah. take it in, or like I, I don't think they really look at it. I think it's more like if someone's kind of on the edge, maybe they'll look at it and be like, oh, do they have a good story? And then if so, then they'll like let them through. Got it. But um, but yeah, it's so like. Like the first, the first time I was 16, I like went home and just like, well, I went to my hotel room, ate like four cupcakes and just like cried the whole night and was like, my career is over. I'm 16. But you did it a few more times, which is <laughs> not what you were saying earlier about like where that's your true. dreams were crushed. You went back to do it. That's true. I, so I did go back to do it. And that's actually why I got this tattoo. Um, because American Idol taught me that it's okay to fail mm -hmm. and it's okay to try again if you fail too. And I don't always remember that, but but uh, it it did teach me that it has a really really special place in and, my heart. And you failed not on national television. I failed which not is on national very television. Important. True. I, I, yes. I know someone yeah. who did. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's a story for off camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, no, super, really really cool fun process. Um, don't know if I would do it again, but I'm glad I did it as many times. The first three times were the, um, it was like once when I was 16, once when I was 18. And then the last time I did it, I think I was 21 and it was the, what was supposed to be the last season. Okay. So honestly, I wasn't even planning on auditioning, but I was just like, this is the last season. Like yeah. I need to go do it. Um, and then I did it. And all those three times I had sang, um, songs by other artists. And then I, when they brought it back, um, the new version, which I actually really, really love, um, Fox, is very tabloidy. ABC is a very like warm homey network. So they do they That's do a much Disney, better job so, yeah. at yeah, exactly. They do a much better job at actually like telling the human story. Um but I, I, then I was like, you know what? I, I don't know if I want this anymore, um, but I'd never done an original. So I was like, I need to go sing an original and like see what happens. Still didn't make it, but like it was kind of like the end cap for me. I was like, this is good. Like I, it's now I feel fulfilled. It's a good bit of closure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. else do you have uh, in addition to Daughtry? Yeah, so here? we got Daughtry. We got other album by Daughtry. Uh, I, I, went, I had so many CDs at one point that I like, just did you I, get rid I, of cds i did i yeah. got rid of a lot of cds sorry i dropped them so there's like multiple cds in these because i had to condense them oh yeah um when i got into daughtry oh i did want to say too that my first concert was also nickelback jason Ooh. Uh, so i really related to did, that a lot did nickelback curse too much in the mics and <laughs> damage your young ears i was literally like like talking to him while he while I was watching the podcast because I related <laughs> to it so much. Um, I don't remember that, but what I do remember was I was 13 and they had like, I was like up in the mezzanine, so I, I didn't get sprayed, but they were spraying people in the pit with beer. <laughs> and I was like sitting there like, <laughs> I'm 13, yeah. like what is going on? Um, so yeah, no, it was definitely, it was definitely intense. Um, it was Nickelback, Daughtry and Stained. Wow. Uh, that was my first concert and I would not change that for anything. But yeah, I had like a bunch of like Christina Aguilera and Britney Spears and like Backstreet Boys and NSYNC CDs. And then when I started getting into like Daughtry and Nickelback, I was like, that gross stuff. <laughs> like, ugh. Dude, no strings attached. It's, right? It's a bop. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I got rid of the, I sold those CDs at a garage sale once I was like a teenager and I was uh -huh. like, ew, gross. Like Britney Spears. No, like, look, I'm this like emo chick now. Um, but whatever. There's that. Uh, Katy Perry Prism, my favorite Katy Perry album. Sorry, one of the boys. Prism's so good. I think one of the boys is in here too, actually. There it is. This is just like a tour of, of, this is like a tour of the music that made Dan Dan. Um, One Republic, Waking Up. This is probably my favorite album ever, still to this day. Um, it's a really, really good concept album. It's also the first concept album that I ever like experienced in real time. Like you get all the like, the, the concept albums from like 70s and 80s oh, bands. Oh, sure, sure. But this was the first one that I was like, this is a concept album. Um, like this is, this is the album with Good Life on it. And 
in like the media that track is portrayed as like oh my god we're all having fun ha, 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 ha. but when you listen to it in the context of the album the album's all about the rise and fall of becoming famous so when you hear it in the context of the album it's like i thought this was going to be a good life but actually i haven't seen my family in months and i'm really lonely and miserable so secret fun facts um and then i think there's other albums in here too yeah i got so many so many albums or so many cds we got Maroon 5. I saw Maroon 5 when I was growing up um, every single time they came to Detroit. So I think I've seen them like 10 to 15 times. It's been a lot. And I see songs about Jane behind that. Uh, oh, songs no, about I don't. Jane is probably in here. Yeah. Yes. Songs about Jane is in here. Hands All Over. Um, this, these are my, this is by far their best album, but I really, really like Hands All Over as well. Overexposed as shit. Uh, it Won't Be Soon Before Long is like, eh. Oh, actually, that's what this is. So I don't know where it won't be soon before long is. Maybe I got rid of that one, too. But garage whatever. sale. Yeah, garage sale. And then this, I did not actually buy this one. This one was a gift from one of my high school friends. But I had to bring my American Idol CD, American Idol Greatest Moment, season one. Uh, so, you know, there's Kelly and Justin from Justin to Kelly. Let's see. I don't really remember a lot of these people's names. I was like, it all started in 2002. So I was like eight. Yeah. Uh-huh. But um, But yeah. Oh, wait, what's in here? Oh, and The Parent Trap. Well, that one is not that... Is that a DVD? I, I love The, the Parent Trap. No, it's a soundtrack. Okay. Yeah, really good soundtrack. Um, I'm trying to remember but, what all is on there. That, um, uh, you want to look at it? Yeah. Because <laughs> there's... Uh, yeah, there's like uh, Love by Nat King Cole. There's... Um, oh, Do You Believe in Magic? I, oh, yeah, yeah, Do You Believe in Magic? Is she so high on that one, too? Oh, um, uh... That might be a different soundtrack that I'm thinking of. Not on this one. Okay, yeah. yeah back to you. Yeah. But yeah, so so this is the remnants of my CD collection, and I'm I'm slowly building up another CD collection of local music, which I which I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, but this was like these were my these were my childhood ones, and uh, I still whenever I'm having a bad time so in the car, you know, in the car, it's nice to be able to just be like I'm gonna throw on Prism instead Absolutely. of having to find it on Spotify. You're like, no, I got the real thing. Yeah, read the lyric <laughs> books, look at the pictures yeah. while you do it. Yeah, exactly. And I, oh my gosh, I held out on CDs so hard. Like everyone was like just use spotify and i was like no i need to give this artist my money i'm buying their cd and eventually i stopped but um actually i think prism was one of the last actual cds that I i'll bought, still buy cds if i'm like going to see that person in concert and it's a small enough artist yeah. where i can probably get it signed afterwards yeah, 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 and yeah. That. yeah but even then i've started to wane off because yeah. i would do that and there'd there would just be the cd there'd be no lyric packet or mm, anything cool and so it's right yeah I'd, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not worth it anymore. I feel that, yeah. And my only CD player is in my car, so yeah. I'm like, can't have too many, because especially now in quarantine, I'm not driving right. as much. I have a CD player that's attached, but it's attached to the same sound system my computer is, mm. so d- my computer is always running, so yeah, it's, it's, that makes sense. it's out of convenience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to take another quick break and then look at your second <laughs> okay. uh, show-and-tell item. We'll be right back with Dan Ray's second show-and-tell item. All right. All the right. moment of truth. Uh, the right. second second show and tell item. Yes. All right. This is just an item that I think everyone should own unless you are very tall. And you will see why in a second. This is my squatty potty. I was turned on to these. Uh, I don't own one yet, but a good friend of mine swears by them. They're I, amazing. Yeah. It. I'm not joking. I'm not joking when I say it literally changed my life. Like it is so much better um also their marketing is amazing like if you have not seen the squatty potty commercials you need to look them up right now there's a unicorn that poops like rainbow soft serve it's amazing and i actually just ordered a travel squatty potty and in the box it came with a crown like a paper crown whoa the so good so good um but no legitimately changed my life i cannot poop without it over the weekend I, your I boss went, is gonna yell at you if she oh listens my gosh, to this podcast I know. <laughs> <laughs> um I, over the weekend I went camping and I just, I, instead of using the porta potty, I just fucking pooped in the woods. Cause I was like, I'm, I'll be squatting. It'll be yeah. great. And it was amazing. Came yeah. out so easy. Highly recommend. Uh, just, just squat it up. This, this will, this will help your butt so much. Buy one. And oh, also. Do you have a preferred brand? Like you've gone deep oh, in the research. Potty. Oh, oh, it's, that's Squatty what Potty it, is a brand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like Frisbee where Frisbee yeah. is the brand and 
Would yeah, you, that, that kind of thing. Off the off nebulous brands. thing. Okay, there are yeah. off brands, but Squatty Potty is the brand. Um, the name brand. And actually, this one when I bought, I bought this one um, in college on Valentine's Day after I had broken up with the dude that I like thought I was gonna marry, and they were having a sale. And I was th- th- like, this is the one you and bought? Th- this is the one I bought. So I was like, you know what, Dan? Buying ourselves a Valentine's Day present. We're getting a squatty potty. <laughs> so that's that. That makes the story so much better. Right? <laughs> yeah. So everybody go buy yourself a squatty potty. It'll be the best thing you ever got for yourself. <laughs> well, Dan, it was so much fun talking to you today. I want to give the last word to you. Um... Yeah, where can people follow Dan's tunes and any last yeah. plugs you want to give? Yeah, uh, people can follow Dan's tunes on Instagram and Facebook at, at Dan's Tunes Seattle. Uh, the website is danstunesseattle.com, and all the links to like our most recent stories are in our uh, link tree in our Instagram bio, um, which I like. I just got on the link tree train like maybe like a month to six weeks ago, and I was like, I should have been doing this forever. Uh, link tree is fairly new though, I guess. Um, yeah, uh, plugs just. Submit your work to us if you want to work for us. Let us know. Or yeah, if you have, if you want to help me turn dance students into, into a business so we can take over the country and start other satellite campuses, let me know. And I don't know. Thanks for having me be a part of the music community. I really, it makes me happy, and I really, really like it. We're very fortunate okay. to have you here. All Thanks. right. Till next time, everybody.